Hi everybody, so for the histology project, I have made a website that talks about P. gingivalis or Porphyromonas gingivalis. So if you type in gwenbatu.com, so this is the webpage and um, on top here, you can click on that to read more about the bacteria or watch now to watch this video um, where I'm talking and going over the website. And then if you scroll down further, you'll see these buttons. So now what we're going to do is we will start with the about section. Alright, so most importantly, P. gingivalis is a gram-negative, rod-shaped, um, anaerobic bacteria. And it belongs to Bacteriodetes phylum. And it got its name from a Greek adjective, perfirios, meaning purple and the noun monas meaning unit so it's one of more than 700 bacterial species inside the oral cavity so now we head over to entry how does p gingivalis get into our mouths or into the oral cavity you may not know there may already be a small amount of p gingivalis in your mouth from infancy to now you are continually introducing a whole slew of bacteria into your mouth, whether it be from drinking water, eating with your hands, P. gingivalis goes in and makes home in your subgingival sulcus. Now, as I said, a small amount is in your mouth, but that doesn't mean you've gotten an infection. It has simply become a part of your normal oral microbiota. However, Things change once you introduce the early colonizing bacteria, which begin to form a biofilm we know as plaque. These early colonizing gram-positive bacteria begin to create an environment that is sustainable for gram-negative anaerobic bacteria. Let's call them secondary colonizers like P. gingivalis. So this allows P. gingivalis to adhere to those primary colonizers on the plaque. And slowly, more and more, P. gingivalis and other gram-negative bacteria start to try to find a home in your mouth. But we will see more about that in survival. How does P. gingivalis survive in your mouth? So P. gingivalis are attracted to nutritionally favorable inflammatory environment which is why it's attracted to the gingival plaque. Now, to your body, P. gingivalis is a bacteria. So, of course, it's going to use its defense mechanisms to fight it off and get rid of it, either through your saliva or even your white blood cells, such as neutrophils. To survive these defenses, P. gingivalis has a bunch of virulence factors that allow it to stay alive. To list a few, it has fimbriae, which are surface appendages that allows it to adhere to cells. It has a capsule to protect it from phagocytosis, lipopolysaccharides to maintain its structure, and even proteases such as gingipanes, which degrades fibrinogen and inhibits blood coagulation. Now that we know how it survives, let's see what happens next in diseases. The major and most important disease caused by P. gingivalis is periodontal disease. So as more and more P. gingivalis and other bacteria colonize, plaque buildup gets worse until you begin to develop inflammation in your gums, which we call gingivitis. Gingivitis is characterized by redness, swelling, and bleeding of your gingival tissue. Now gingivitis is considered the early stage of periodontal disease. And at this stage, inflammation is reversible. Periodontal ligaments and alveolar bones are not involved, and tooth attachment is not affected. However, if your oral hygiene continues to be neglected, combined with your body becoming more susceptible, then you will eventually get periodontitis. Now, to become susceptible, it can be as simple as being stressed, eating unhealthy, and even smoking. Those all play a major role in this condition. Now, once you have severe periodontitis, this is now an irreversible plaque-induced inflammation where the gums pull away from the tooth. P. 
periodontal ligaments and alveolar bones get destroyed, leading to tooth loss and the periodontal pocket formation. All right, next up is the pathogenesis of P. gingivalis. Okay, so for pathogenesis, unfortunately, with periodontal disease, the inflammation is irreversible, and eventually you may lose your teeth. Although P. gingivalis is the main culprit in all of this, we must understand that it's not just one of these microbial species doing the damage. It's actually a combination of all those gram-negative bacteria working together to destroy your tissue. What's worse is the damage doesn't end in your mouth. P. gingivalis can make its way to your bloodstream through brushing, flossing, and other dental procedures. And once there, it can go everywhere in your body. Research has found it in coronary arteries, placentas, livers, and not only that, we are seeing it play an even bigger role in you getting diseases such as cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's, and even respiratory tract infections. A bunch of diseases that you did not initially think of. On to the exit page. How does P. gingivalis leave our body? So the best way to stop P. gingivalis is to prevent it from being able to colonize on your plaque in the first place, and that is through good oral hygiene, such as brushing your teeth, flossing your teeth, going to a scheduled dental visit, eating healthy, and even stopping smoking if you are. Our bodies are fully capable of removing P. gingivalis on its own via saliva and even phagocytosis with neutrophils. Your real worst enemy is plaque buildup, so avoid it as much as you can. So remember, gingivitis is reversible, but periodontitis is not. So take precautions now before it gets to that point. There really is no magic cure to periodontal disease. No medicine or procedure will fully get rid of the disease or P. gingivalis. So be sure to perform good oral hygiene and make sure P. gingivalis doesn't rob you of your teeth.